Hello and welcome to Ask Hila, the Prince Weekly Show on the Economy. I'm Remya Nair and I'm joined by uh, Professor Hila Patnaik. As you all know, she's a well-known economist and a professor at the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy. So do send in all the questions that you have and I will be happy to pose them to Hila. Uh, the law, uh, this year was supposed to be a year of double-digit growth where the economy was supposed to rebound from the around 8% contraction uh, that is expected in 2020-21. But the second wave of the pandemic has raised a lot of questions on whether India will see this double-digit growth, uh, whether the 11% growth that was forecast by the economic survey in uh, as late as January uh, 31st this year, will we actually see those uh, growth numbers in 2021-22? Uh, so, uh, you know, these are the kind of questions that we will take. So please do send in your questions. Uh, Ma'am, I would want to start by asking you, do you think India will see a double-digit growth in 21-22? I think it won't be double digit. It will be below 10% definitely. But uh, one point uh, is very important to make uh, in the present environment. There are many people who are suggesting that the economy will, uh, I'll quote them, decline further. Okay. Now, when uh, these words are used, they seem to imply that we contracted last year and we will contract further this year. So uh, the first point to make is that we are discussing positive growth and we are discussing by how much will the positive growth be so let's not you know let's stay away from that confusion that we are not talking about a decl economy declining further what we are talking about is that we are still not at the pre-pandemic levels because the economy declined we had hoped to bound bounce back very fast to grow very fast you know we were seeing a v-shaped recovery but the second wave has stalled that and growth projections by almost all forecasters have been pared down. So if they were saying 13%, they are saying 9%. If they were saying 12%, they are saying 8 So they have all now realized that the economy is not going to grow as fast as we thought it would grow. Growth will still be positive. So it is, you know, we don't have a nationwide lockdown of the kind we saw in the first wave of COVID where everything was, you know, went to a standstill. Here, there are pockets of the economy which are growing. There are pockets which are seeing uh, lockdowns, local lockdowns. There are pockets where the disease, uh, where the, uh, you know, uh, positivity rates are very high. Uh, there are difficulties because supply is getting disrupted there because of uh, people falling ill. But And on the other hand, we also have demand side effects, but it is still an economy that is growing, but at a lower rate, not at double digits anymore. So, but it uh, the economy is growing, but it does look difficult that it would reach the levels that were there as of the output levels that were there as of March 2020. Correct. So the output levels, the level of uh, economic activity in the economy is not likely to reach uh, pre-pandemic levels very fast. And in fact, if you just, you know, you, you forget the calculations uh, that an economist might make and you just look around and say, which are the industries which are unlikely to see the levels of activity, just sheer output activity, uh, incomes and sales, uh, now in the next, uh, say, nine months or 10 months, then they will not include aviation, hospitality, tourism, you know, because of the spread of the virus. So you, are, uh, you would expect that because some pockets are down, there might be some pockets in the health sector, which uh, is actually seeing much more activity. But you know, very, very large pockets of the uh, economy, many sectors are not going to get back to the same level. They may get back slowly, but certainly not back to the levels of March 2020. Right. Uh, the RBI uh, last week announced a series of measures to support individuals, small businesses. Uh, do you think now it's the time for the government also to announce some measures? There have been some measures related to food grain supplies uh, to the poor, but do you think there's, uh, there are more measures are needed? You see, the government might come up with measures. I'm not very clear what they would be. So from uh, the point of view of credit, some measures have been announced by the RBI, you know, MSMEs, which are suffering much more. Now, migrant labor has gone back again, but we don't have a very good uh, labor register, you know, which uh, could 
help at this time. But I think uh, the government could, looking at the economic distress that this will uh, cause, uh, announce measures. They're more likely to be health-related measures. But let's right. see. Okay. Uh, Amitav Ghosh is a Twitter user. He's asking, can an economy which was ailing even before the pandemic convince international and domestic customers to open their purse strings more liberally? You see, investment is always hit by uncertainty. No matter which country you are in, no matter what age you live in, no matter which sector you are uh, investing in. Okay, So currently, if uncertainty is high, in those sectors, we will see less investment. And whether it is domestic purses or the purses of foreign investors, you know, they will go down as the uncertainty goes down. So it depends on how we handle uh, the uh, pandemic. I mean, I know I've been saying this for the last one year that whatever happens to the economy, whatever happens to foreign investment, it all depends on how the pandemic is handled. And I think what's happened is that the second wave has, we didn't expect the second wave to be of this intensity and the vaccination uh, that was happening uh, obviously did not stop the second wave. And now uh, there is increased uncertainty, but I think it's likely to go away soon. I mean, the, the way at uh, the rate at which, uh, you know, for example, we've seen the positivity rate uh, go down uh, in big cities, also total number of cases because of the effect of both the lockdown, as well as the fact that many people have just actually fallen ill. So I think that this uncertainty may be, you know, by hopefully by the end of the year, it will go down and then more investors will start coming through. Uh, and investors are especially important right now, given that, you know, the kind of uh, focus that the government had on infrastructure push, the fact that the government was quoting, uh, you know, pension funds, global pension funds, global insurance funds, and asking them to come and invest into the country. Well, investors are important, not just from abroad, but domestic investors as well. Because, uh, you know, investment abroad is something that you know, there's liquidity and there's money looking for investment opportunities and to get returns. Interest rates around the world are very, very low. And there's, uh, you know, what's called hot money sloshing around. There's a lot of liquidity sloshing around in the system. So investors do want opportunities. Now, it's only, I, th I mean, I think it's a matter of months when uh, things will you know, quieten down and then uh, as more and more people get vaccinated and as the economy uh, starts growing faster again, that uh, things open up, uh, local lockdowns open up, then I think we'll start getting investors back because of the large, large pools of global capital that are looking for opportunities to invest in. And India still remains an uh, you know, attractive destination in many ways. It's a very large market. Right. Uh, Saptarishi is asking, is it practical to say GDP figures will be around 3 to 4%? So since now we are saying that India may not grow in double digits, he's asking if the growth numbers are going to be around 3 to 4%. Look, I, uh, I, I as you know, uh, the way investment is difficult, it is also very difficult to make forecasts at this time. Right in the midst of, before the picture is clearing up, maybe in the next, uh, you'll, we'll come back to this question in the next uh, you know two three months or so when this wave of covid has subsided and we are not and we are looking at what are our vaccination numbers at the moment i would say yes 3 to 4% is uh, possible but again it all depends on how we handle the pandemic and what the numbers look like right because in the first quarter last year there was a 24% contraction but then gradually things improved and Hopefully, the full year will be only an 8% contraction. Exactly, exactly. There was so much movement at that. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Amir is asking, will this vastly affect the rupees value? As in, will how we grow as an economy help uh, affect the rupees value? See, the uh, that will definitely in many ways. So, uh, if, at, if things continue the way they are presently, then we are pretty much out of sync with the global business cycle. So the global business cycle is at the moment, US business cycle is seeing a, an upswing. And because that is seeing an upswing, while we are still, we are not, uh, we're trying to improve, go, uh, grow, but we are still hit with a second wave, even if we recover rapidly in the next uh, two, three months, even then, we will be behind the global cycle who 
countries which are already vaccinated and which have already picked up growth and that means that we would be less attractive than perhaps other destinations uh, that is one of the factors that will uh, you know depend if that will uh, affect global capital flows the second is also the policy response so if interest rates uh, go down in india and go up in the us any time actually interest rates go up in the us you find that global capital goes back to the us okay so this risk on risk off scenario happens which again affects the value of the currency because of the movement of uh, capital so there are factors these are basically short term factors looking at a quarter or so that the, these are the factors that uh, whether they are actually change or whether there is expectations of change if there is an expectation that india will keep uh, rates in us you know where they are let's say while the us uh, will li likely hike rates then that starts affecting the value of the currency so yes right uh, hitesh is asking do you think we now need major structural reforms and is it high time for the government to implement its prior commitment of such reforms i mean the, if you look at the first package the first package did have a lot of structural reforms including the agricultural reforms which were most welcome and which should which the congress government should have done like uh, 30 years ago after 1991 but many of the reforms uh, were opposed i mean many of what was done which were the fundamental structural reforms where entire sectors had been left unreformed i don't know whether in the midst of this pandemic any government will be able to actually do a lot in terms of structural reform so you know even like those farm bills were kept on hold for a couple of years and you know i i guess a lot of energy is currently being uh, put on focus and energy is being put on how to handle the pandemic so i doubt if a lot will happen in the near future right um saksham is asking can we realistically expect a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 i don't know whether we should take this 5 trillion dollar economy as some sort of a, a gospel where you know we face this question many times many many of our viewers uh, ask this question will we get a 5 trillion dollar economy by such and such a year so uh, you know instead of giving you a straight answer that is that we'll get a 5 trillion dollar in year 202345 or whatever i want to tell them that what i think is that really this is an aspirational thing you know when uh, the leader of any country says oh i want a 5 trillion dollar economy i don't think he literally means that it will be 5 trillion dollar and that we'll uh, you know uh, sell a lot of dollars at that time and then we'll actually make the rupee appreciate and we'll make it a 5 trillion dollar economy i don't think he means that or that we'll get you know uh, growth regardless of whether there, there's a pandemic or not i think the sense of it is and this is just my understanding of it i'm not in the government is that it is an aspiration which means that we want to have large gdp growth uh, a big high gdp growth uh, a large economy and when you say a large economy then globally a large economy uh, you know not you're not just talking in rupee terms so it's an aspiration rather than an exact a uh, calculation where you say oh for that this should have doubled and the pandemic shouldn't have happened it's very true the pandemic shouldn't have happened if you wanted to get there but uh, let's not take it literally and i don't think i want to answer the question literally because i'll definitely be wrong right uh Arpit is asking, how will it impact Indian export businesses? Exports should do well, actually, because uh, the global economy is doing well. In fact, uh, in the purchasing managers index, we saw that it was exports that pulled up the index uh, for April, because uh, the world economy is uh, is uh, uh, growing more rapidly than we are uh, in uh, in getting back to pre-pandemic levels. in fact it's also reflected in as you said in the export numbers even the trade data that came out uh, two days back the exports yeah. have really done well irrespective of the low base but even if you would compare it to the year before the growth has been really good in some segments yeah yeah and we can expect it to improve further right 
Ankit is asking, will there be a period of global economic boom uh, before a financial crisis, considering a strong US and global economic growth? And can India gain from this? I mean, India can do better in terms of its exports. Uh, if we, I think, I hope we will recover fast enough and then we will be able to not have supply constraints and be able to meet that demand and that should help India. So whenever, in fact, if you go back all the way to the 1991 reforms after that, whenever the global economy has done well, India has done well. So this won't be the first time. India always rides that wave because we, you know, we globalized at that time. We globalized and we uh, allowed uh, imports to come in and made our imports uh, cheaper uh, by removing a lot of custom duties. And what really, what it really gave us was an opportunity to ride this wave of uh, global cycles and to get higher growth whenever, uh, you know, the world gets higher growth. So, in fact, now also maybe we should consider cutting down on uh, import duties because rather than protectionism, uh, if we are able to get cheaper inputs and export more, then we might be better off riding that wave than trying to do protectionism here. Right. Our Twitter user is asking that what are your views on the rural economy? So... The uh, numbers for uh, COVID uh, for rural areas are looking bad, but I think, you know, in, in, even when we see very, very bad uh, waves like we saw in Delhi uh, in the last few weeks, it lasts for about four to five weeks. So uh, the this is a time when, you know, it's really those four to five weeks, are like, any, any, any place can get hit. Uh, especially congested places, which the uh, rural areas are not. But I'm just saying that worst case scenario would be a very highly dense place, mm -hmm. which would have got hit. But that is not the case for rural areas. So I don't expect the rural economy to be hit very much uh, by the by the pandemic. Uh, that will depend on, again, you know, monsoons, and uh, procurement and all the usual things, not particularly new because of uh, the pandemic. Right. And uh, this would be our last question. Uh, Prasad is asking, should India focus more on areas like AI and renewable energy technologies where there is immense potential for growth? I think as uh, a market economy, we are very fortunate that uh, we have been able to grow in areas of growth as and when there are opportunities anywhere in the world. So if you look at the software industry, because there were opportunities, you know, without a government policy, when we, when uh, other than, you know, more uh, broadband. So while their policy was supportive, but there was no industrial policy, no policy to say uh, you'll get, pay so much taxes or get subsidies or anything you know, usual subsidy related uh, industrial sort of policy, as we call it, wasn't there. So India being a market economy is often very good at being able to tap the latest uh, trends, use the opportunities the uh, to its own advantage wherever it has strengths. So in that context, you know, wherever it is, it will be possible to get into whether it's AI, whether it's renewable, whether it's a, a new form of, uh, you know, support to uh, uh, sustainable, uh, support to handmade, support to, you know, things that are, uh, uh, which are more uh, local. There are many, many opportunities India has, not just these. And fortunately, because, you know, we are open enough, we should be able to actually uh, take advantage of them. Fintech is also one sector, right? That has really seen a boom in the last few years. True, true, true. Absolutely. So there are many sectors where, you know, people see opportunities and go out and they exploit those opportunities. And uh, I think India is very good at that, at utilizing its strengths. Right. On that note, uh, thank you so much. We'll end here. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for answering all the questions. And thank you to all the viewers for sending in your queries. Uh, do stay tuned in to our uh, YouTube channel for more such uh, videos. Thank you.